So, something a little bit different today. I was sat at the computer this morning editing away. And I've looked out the window and the sun's blaring. And I thought, it's too nice to be sat inside. Looked at the weather and it's six degrees outside, so it's cold. But I thought, I've got some maggots in the fridge that are going to go to waste. I best go and use them. So I've nipped down the road to my local fish route, which is Pipe Hill Farm. So we've put our kit on our peg, just with the wind slightly off our back. It's quite bitterly, well it is bitterly cold today to be honest. Let's go and have a look. So we've decided to go just in the corner here, just where it's a bit calmer. Because that wind's really cold. And what I've realised the last few times I've been out, it, them fish just just choosing to sit just off the back of the wind. This corner looks absolutely lovely, little willow tree there. And uh, we've come on birch pool. Only a lovely, lovely little pool, but it's full of all different kinds of fish. And uh, the last time we come here, I caught some chub about two pound. I was only pleasure fishing. So I've just come back with arm with a maggot feeder. That's all I've brought. And I've sat on this peg out, just out the wind. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna, start fishing I've got three points of maggots I'm just gonna start fishing and we'll see what we can catch Really try and build the peg up. Oh, that was a little line of that. Oh, and there's the first fish. And it feels like a small fish. Absolutely brilliant on this on this rod there. And it's, it's a nice roach. Look at him. Absolutely stunning fish. About five ounce. Lovely. Lovely start. I am going to though. Swap this rod, rod rest to the other leg. I'm going to hold the rod. There we go. Swap the rod rest to the other leg, just so I can hold my rod. Because them bites are quite quick. What we don't want to be doing is missing loads of bites. It was 
carp was fishing for, then we'd just leave it down and wait wait for the rod to to tow round. But like I said, it's a real mixed fishery here. So we don't really want to be missing them. Them silverfish. Hey, there's the next fish. There's like another roach. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's a big roach this time. Look at him. Cracker. Look at him. Absolutely stunning fish. I could catch these all day. This kind of fishing really does take me back to my childhood. Just going with like one rod, a few maggots. Even on the drop, then. But back then, it was a case of going down the canal. Because I grew up on the canal. I used to just go up the canal with like one, one rod. Sometimes not even a rod, just a piece of line and a hook with a few maggots, and just see if I could catch a few little perch. And then I started going on commercials, but it's with the same gear, just a rod and some maggots. It's not very often I get to actually do it these days. It's just nice. That little pluck then. <laughs> That's absolutely solid there with them roach. I think I was having a go at the feeder. Hopefully there's a few of them them chubby. I have actually done a feature on here before. It was a uh a method feeder feature. But I didn't realise that it was such a mixed species water. It weren't the best of features to be honest. Catching chub and tension. But maybe I should have come on here and done a real fancy waggler feature or something like that. Because it would be absolutely beautiful on a waggler on here. Catching these, what's this? Oh, cracking roach. Look at him. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely beautiful fish. Never been caught before him. Mouth spotless.
So I'm just setting the tip really lightly. So what I don't want is for the fish to give me a bite, but feel the resistance and let it go. So it's quite slack the tip. And I want them to just pull themselves on. There you go, he's on. The rod we're using is a... Uh, it's a 10 foot Preston Superior SL. As the name suggests, SL. It's a super light rod. Designed for like silverfish and F1s. But I've had carp on this rod, and it's coat with them well. Don't get me wrong, it bends into the butt. But it's not snapped. <laughs> it's probably one of my favourite rods, to be fair. I don't get to use it all that often. As I'd like to. Because I've got better rods for doing specific jobs sometimes. Like if I was going on a match fishing for carp, I wouldn't deliberately use this rod. Because <laughs> it's just not the right rod for the job. However, if I was going on a match to catch a bit of everything, this definitely is the right rod for the job. The trick is, with these bites, is to wait for more than one indication. If it's one indication, then nothing. The fish has basically felt the resistance and let go. If it's more than one indication, the fish has basically the hook's got him. You need to strike before he gets off it. Because they're barbless hooks. They can come out quite easy. I cannot believe this snow. This weren't forecast. Well, as you can see from the weather, but look what we've got. Woohoo! A chub a dub dub. Right, let's get him back. He don't want to leave us. There he goes. Oh, well, as you can see, we've retreated to the car because, look at this. It's absolutely blasting down with snow. Unreal. And I'm there in sunglasses on my head. Look at that. <laughs> That's the snow on my glasses. But we've been here about 40 minutes now. I'm going to give it 10 minutes. Hopefully this snow clears. And then we'll go back out. And I've just had a chub. So hopefully there's a couple more there. We'll try and snare a few chub and then we'll get off. Well, hopefully... 
that's the end of the snow. Oh, I dropped my lid. Oh, maggots stayed dry, so that's the main thing. As I was saying, just hopefully there's a few chub there. Took us about half an hour, forty minutes to get one. I don't know what the stocking of chub is like in here. Hopefully, there's absolutely loads, and we have one a chub now. Obviously, we've not been feeding. Oh, that's one of them roach, I think. Obviously, we've not been feeding it since we've since we retreated to the car. So they might have just just backed off, but it shouldn't take us long to get them back. What's this? Looks like a rud, I think. Is it? Ah. Uh. Yeah, that was a rud that was. <laughs> I've the net. Go on, chubby chub, chub, chub. Right bite off that chub. No indications, then it just went whoop. Using a size 16 hook, which is a Preston SFL. That's the 011 power line, so quite light. But we're using this using this soft rod, so we should be able to get away with it. Things these. Okay.
solid there with them roach. Oh no, skimmer this time. Good little skimmer. Proper mixed bag, so we've had roach, rud, chub, a hybrid, and a skimmer. Not being stingy with the bait, giving them a full feeder full every time. Seems like there's loads of fish there. So I'm giving them some food. And if there's loads of them roach and little fish there, we need to be putting quite a bit in just so there's enough to draw some chub in. There's another fish. Must be full of these. That's a rud that is. Oh, it's popped off again. That's two rud we've lost. Let's put on a double white maggot. That's not a roach. Unless it's somewhat far locked. getting a little bit cold now but I want to show you these lovely chub right here so keep going oh that was a good bite there's only a small fish Or roach hooked right in the bottom lip, lovely. <laughs> Little tip for you when you're going to change your up bait, just give the maggots a little ruffle in the middle because the strongest maggots and the biggest ones will just bury themselves down in the middle of the tub. The ones on the top are the weakest maggots. That wasn't good, was it? Still got all our maggots in there. Just chucking it a couple of foot off the island. 
So over the winter, a lot of them reeds and stuff have died. So right up tight to the island, the bottom's going to be quite, like, dirty from the reeds and stuff. Also, there's branches off that willow overhanging the island, so you can't get tied up anyway. That one smashed the maggots. Judging by how long it takes the feeder to get to the bottom, it's about three to four foot deep there where I'm casting. Just on a steady shelf. But as you can tell from the weather, it's not exactly warm. So the fish aren't going to be one of the fish aren't going to want to be in that shallow water. So you're best off just coming away from the island anyway a little bit. Feels a bit different that one. What's that? fish. This time I'm going to put three maggots on, just to try and entice one of them chub to grab hold of it. The bites are slowing down a bit now, from them smaller fish, so I'm hoping that there's a couple of them chub there. Absolutely fantastic fish in there. Oh no, it's an oil bit again. Look at him. Lovely fish. Three white maggots. Three maggots produce a bit better fish though, so we'll try that again. One, two, three. 
and we're just nicking them maggots through the thin end. Just really lightly hooking them. There's a branch just hanging off that willow and it keeps blowing out in the wind and we're just trying to skim it. If we aim to get close to that branch every time we know we're going to be in the same, same spot. Them bites have definitely slowed up a bit now which is actually a good thing if we're after them chub. It's just going to give them a chance to get in and actually get to some maggots instead of them roach polishing them all off. He wanted that one. We'll have this last chuck, see if we can get a chub. And then we're going to call it a day because we've been fishing nearly an hour now. And I did promise myself that I was only going to have an hour. And I want to be back in time for the missus to get home. Because then, I can deny it ever happened. Ooh, that was a lucky bite. <laughs> what a cracking fish to end on. Look at him. <laughs> He's got to be over a pound here. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Tell you what. What a nice fish to end on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.